Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So today's Commander Two Cents episode comes to you courtesy of Mike, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support of amazing patrons like Mike. So again, Mike, thank you so much. And the topic that Mike chose for this episode is how to deal with control. Now, control can mean a lot of things to a lot of different Magic players. Specifically, Mike is asking about the type of control that's about taking your stuff and preventing you from playing a game of Magic. For example, Mike brought up commanders such as Turgrid and Xanathar and wondering how to combat them, even if you're playing, say, just Mono White. How do you go about it? So, I'm going to start off by tackling those specific examples and then talk about combating control in general. I'm going to bring up plenty of examples of cards to consider, so no matter what kind of a deck you're in or what colors you've got access to, even if it's just mono white, you've got some options. Control decks are looking to, well, control the game, so how do you throw a wrench into their plans and turn the tables on them? And how do you do so against particularly nasty commanders like Turgrid and Xanathar? So throughout my recommendations, I of course will be bringing up plenty of budget cards that can help you out along the way. So with all that said, let's jump into it. So, Turgrid God of Fright is an incredibly nasty commander that is becoming quite popular. Now, I've given my thoughts on Turgrid before, so I won't jump up on my soapbox today, but if you are going up against Turgrid, how do you combat her? Turgrid God of Fright is a 4-5 god with menace that costs 3 black black. But the nasty part about her is, whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Yeah, that's pretty disgusting. And it can be very intimidating when this commander is on the other side of the table. Turgrid is all about forcing players to sacrifice a lot of things and force them to discard cards as well. She can essentially steal a ton of things from her opponents in absolutely no time. So let's break down what this commander wants to do and how to combat that strategy. First off, yeah, Homeward Path could definitely help out, though it is a decently expensive card, so please keep that in mind. It can tap to add a colorless, or it can tap and each player gains control of all creatures they own. So if the target player has been stealing a bunch of creatures through sacrifice or through discard, well, everyone gets their creatures back. Brand is another option if you're in red. It says gain control of all permanents you own, and it's got cycling for two. So it's not necessarily a dead card against other strategies because you can just cycle it away for two. And against a Turgrid player, gaining control of all permanents you own can put you really far ahead. And of course, another option that is even more budget friendly is Trostani Discordant. Trostani has other creatures you control get plus one plus one and when it enters the battlefield, create two one one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. But the important part here is at the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. Obviously, if a Turgrid player is very problematic in your playgroup, well, you could combat them by building a Trostani Discordant deck to really teach them a lesson. Now, there are only so many cards out there that gives players back control of the things that they own. But of course, that's not the only way to combat a control strategy like Turgrid's. Next up, I wish Rest in Peace was a bit more budget friendly because it's very effective against a lot of strategies. When it enters the battlefield, you exile all cards from all graveyards, and if a card or token be put into a graveyard from anywhere, you exile it instead. In order to steal cards from players, Turgrid needs those cards to actually hit the graveyard to get them. So with those cards being exiled instead, the Turgrid player can't take them. Again, I do wish this card was more budget-friendly in that there are more budget alternatives to it, but fear not, there are budget ways to still combat this commander outside of this. Some somewhat similar cards to this one that can help out in various ways are Weathered Runestone, Grafdigger's Cage, and Kunoros Hound of Athreos. Weathered Runestone says, Non-land permanent cards in graveyards and libraries can enter the battlefield, and players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries, so this actually shuts down a couple of different strategies. 
And then Crafticker's Cage is a bit more specific. It says creature cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. And again, players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. And then Kenoros has creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield and players can't cast spells from graveyards. So these can actually be really effective against a lot of different graveyard strategies and effective against Turgrid as well. Some other kinds of cards to consider to combat Turgrid are cards that prevent you from sacrificing things. Tajura Preserver and Sigarda Hosa Hurons both have spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice permanence. And Tambio Collector of Tales takes this a step further, saying spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanence. That especially can throw a wrench into the Turgid player's plans because, yeah, they're not going to be able to take any of your things by forcing you to discard or sacrifice permanence. Now, yes, these are pretty specific solutions that aren't going to work for every single kind of deck. But let's talk about another solution that might be more applicable for a lot of decks out there that can really turn the tables on a Turgrid player. First up, let's talk about Sudden Disappearance, which says, Exile all non-land permanents target player controls, return the exile cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This is actually a really flexible card that can help out in a lot of situations. First up, if you've got a deck with a lot of creatures that have ETBs, yeah, you can take a lot of advantage of those. Or if you want to swing out at a player and you need an opening, this can give you the perfect opening by getting rid of all their creatures temporarily. Or, you know, you can target the Turgrid player with this and give every other player back every single thing the Turgrid player has stolen, okay, out outside of lands, but still. A game against a Turgrid deck can easily become an arch enemy game very quickly. So it's not going to take much to convince the other players that, hey, if I cast this spell, you're going to help me take that player out with all of these things I'm giving back to you. So I guess I should have mentioned that before that politics is definitely a way that you can utilize to take out a Turgid player or another one of those types of commanders. Regardless, a similar card that can help out in this respect is Planar Guide. Its Oracle text reads, pay three and a white, exile it, exile all creatures at the beginning of the next end step, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So again, this can be a great way for a blink deck to abuse ETBs, or you can utilize it to protect your creatures, or again against a Turgid player, you can give everyone back their creatures. Again, by doing that, you can gain a lot of political favor with those other opponents, and you can help take out that Turgid player pretty quickly by giving every player back every creature the Turgid player has stolen or made them discard and stole. Or how about a smaller effect, but still a very flexible one with Charming Prince? When it enters the battlefield, you choose one, scry two, gain two life, or exile another target creature you own, return to the battlefield under control at the beginning of the next end step. Keep in mind that last one says target creature you own. So yeah, the target player is going to be stealing some of your creatures. And when you do get that creature exiled, it's going to come back into play under your control. Speaking of which, let's talk about some cards that you can add into any deck with Voyager Staff and Mystifying Maze. Voyager Staff has pay two and sack it. Exile target creature, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So yeah, this is a very flexible effect that can either, you know, save one of your creatures from a removal spell, or help you abuse an ETB, or yeah, steal something back from the Turgrid player. And Mystifying Maze can help out in a different way. It can either tap for a color, so you can pay 4 and tap to exile target attacking creature and opponent controls, and at the beginning of the next end step, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. So this is kind of like a maze of if in a way protecting you in combat from attacking creature, and again, if the Turgid player is attacking with a creature, it goes back into play under its owner's control. Again, keep in mind this is just taking up a land slot, so it's definitely one to consider. But another way to look at combating a Turgid player isn't going to be to try to get players their things back. It might just be trying to take advantage of the fact that that Turgid player has a fantastic position in a ton of things in play. So a fantastic finisher that you might want to consider is Clone Legion. It says for each creature target player controls, create a token that's a copy of that creature. So however good that player's board is with all their creatures, now you're getting a copy of every single one of their creatures, including Turgrid. Or how about Reigns of Power? It's an instant that says, untap all creatures you control and all creatures target opponent controls. You and that opponent each gain control of all creatures the other controls until end of turn. Those creatures gain haste until end of turn. This card is incredible in a lot of situations, especially against a Turgid player. Let's say that that player casts a spell that's going to make a lot of players sacrifice a lot of things. Well, in response, gain control of all their creatures, including Turgrid, and give them yours. Now, everything that's sacrificed actually goes into play under your control because you've got Turgrid. So that'll teach them a pretty valuable lesson. Or, you know, if they're already set up and have a ton of creatures, well, just switch your board with theirs and swing out and dish out a ton of damage. 
Another fantastic way to finish off opponents in this way is with Mob Rule. It lets you either gain control of all creatures with power 4 greater until end of turn, or 3 or less until end of turn. So again, use their massive board to your advantage and take their army and swing out. Or I mean, take their army and everyone else's army and have fun. But perhaps the simplest way of dealing with a Turgrid player is, well, dealing with Turgrid. If you've got a decent amount of removal in your deck, such as cards like Path to Exile, Swords of Plowshares, and D-Spark, yeah, make sure you're targeting those at Turgrid. Turgrid is essentially the definition of a commander that is kill on sight. So work with your other opponents to ensure that that keeps happening. If the Turgrid player can't keep Turgrid out, well, then their deck isn't going to be functioning properly. So yeah, especially depending on your meta, make sure that you have enough interaction in your deck to deal with things like that. And again, utilize politics to ensure that other players are on the same page as you and knowing who the real threat is, which is, well, Turgrid. And though these next cards can induce some salt, I pretty much believe that anything goes against a Turgrid player because, yeah, Turgrid is a salt-inducing commander as it is. If you're playing Turgrid, you pretty much have it coming and should be expecting essentially any way to stop you, including things like Nevermore, Gideon's Intervention, and Meddling Mage. Essentially, when these cards come into play, you name Turgrid, and then your opponent can't cast Turgrid. And good luck to the mono-black Turgrid player dealing with an enchantment. Again, a play like this can be salt-inducing, but yeah, Turgrid is basically made of salt, so it's kind of like giving them a taste of their own medicine. And obviously, these cards and target removal and some of the other strategies that we've discussed work against our next commander, so let's move on to that one. Again, Mike asked about how to deal with Xanathar as well, so let's talk about this commander. Xanathar is a 5-6 Beholder for 4 blue-black, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, choose target opponent. Until end of turn, that player can't cast spells. You may look at the top card of their library anytime you may play the top card of their library. You may spend mana as though it mana of any color to cast spells this way. So Xanathar goes about taking your opponent's things in a different way. It basically shuts a player down from casting spells during their turn, and then it also lets them have access to the top of their library and cast their spells. Obviously, again, cards like Nevermore can shut this down just by not letting them get their commander out, or, you know, target removal can help too. But outside of the things that I've already mentioned, when you break this commander down, if you don't want this commander to take your things, well, protect yourself. So you can protect yourself with things like Leyline of Sanctity, Orbs of Warding, and Teo the Shield Mage. Each of these do various other things, but the main thing that they do is that they give you Hexproof. Again, with Xanathar's upkeep trigger, they have to target an opponent. If you've got Hexproof, well, they can't target you, so they can't shut you down, and they also can't steal your cards. Especially when you get to a one-on-one -on -one situation against this type of a commander, these can be game-changing. If they can't deal with these cards, well, then their commander essentially doesn't function. And actually, there's a commander that can help out with this as well with Shalai, Voice of Plenty. She's a 3-4 Flying Angel that says, You, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof. And by paying 4 green green, you put a plus plus 1 counter on each creature you control. So obviously, if you've got a deck that's got access to both green and white, this card can be very effective at helping you out in a lot of situations. Or, you know, if you just really want to annoy your friend that's got a Xanathar deck, build a Shalai deck and teach them a lesson. Some other things that can really help, though, are slowing things down with cards like Archon of Emeria, Arcane Laboratory, and Curse of Exhaustion. Archon of Emeria has each player can't cast more than one spell each turn in non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So obviously this slows all of your opponents down with their non-basic lands, but more importantly, it slows everyone down to just one spell each turn. Xanathar decks work to cast a lot of spells off their opponent's libraries in a single turn. So by keeping each player to one spell, well, their plans are going to have to change because they're not going to get all that value that they could normally get. Obviously, there are other effects that do this. Even in blue, Arcane Laboratory is one that you can consider that just basically does the exact same thing. But perhaps the most effective out of all these that all the other players at the table will definitely appreciate is Curse of Exhaustion. It's an aura curse that lets you enchant player, and the enchanted player can't cast more than one spell each turn. So slow that Xanathar player down and allow everyone else to play at their normal pace. Another card that I'm going to bring up that I will most definitely caution you to consider as probably a last resort is Dranth Magistrate. It says your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. This is an extremely salt-inducing card, and actually your opponents very well might just turn on you instead of the Xanathar player if you play this. Obviously, it gets the job done and doesn't allow that Xanathar player to cast spells from the top of anyone's libraries. 
but you know it also shuts down all of your opponents from casting their commanders. So yeah, you're definitely going to become a target when you play this. Regardless, something that can really help out against a commander like Xanthar that likes to steal a lot of things is to essentially reset things and get rid of them. So cards like Akroma's Vengeance, Cleansing Nova, and Heliod's Intervention can come in huge. Akroma's Vengeance is going to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, and it's got cycling for three. So if you really need a reset button, this can really help you, and if you don't need it, you can cycle it away. Xanathar players count on a good amount of enchantments and especially artifacts in play that can help them utilize the top of an opponent's library to the best of their ability. So by destroying all those things, as well as Xanathar and the things that they've stolen, well, you can kind of reset things and set that player back a lot. And then Cleansing Nova is very flexible as well. It says destroy all creatures, destroy all artifacts, and enchantments. So again, if their artifacts and enchantments are the problem, get rid of those. If their creatures are the problem, get rid of those. And then Helion's Intervention is more of a targeted solution, but it's still flexible. It says choose one, destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments, or target player gains twice X life. Again, by removing those key enchantments and artifacts that that Xanathar player has, you can really set them back. Regardless, now that I've given some examples on how to deal with these two specific commanders, let's talk about more in general how to deal with control strategies and how to battle against them. One of my favorite cards against a control strategy, especially a counter-heavy strategy, is Curse of Echoes. It's an aura curse that says enchant player. Whenever enchanted player casts an instant or sorcery spell, each other player may copy that spell and may chase new targets to the copy he or she controls. Essentially, this is a blue mage's nightmare to have on them. Because when they cast a counter spell to counter something, well, everyone else gets a counter spell that they can just, you know, use to counter their spell. So if you can get this on an opponent, it can really shut down a counter heavy strategy. Another way to shut down counter spells, at least for your spells, is Tidal Barracuda. It says any player may cast spells as though they had flash and your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. So this lets every player cast spells whenever they want as long as it's not on your turn. Which means that none of your things are going to be dealt with or countered on your turn. And then Tithe Taker is a somewhat lesser approach to this that can help in different ways. It says during your turn, spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast, and abilities your opponent's activate cost one more to activate unless they're mana abilities, and it's got Afterlife 1. So this is a nice additional benefit for certain decks like an Aristocrat style strategy. Another way to deal with a counter heavy strategy is with cards like Rhythm of the Wild, Prowling Serpent Pard, and Spellbreaker Behemoth. If you've got a creature based deck, these can come in huge. Rhythm of the Wild and Prowling Serpent Pard say creature spells you control can't be countered. And Spellbreaker Behemoth says creature spells you control with power 5 or greater can't be countered. So obviously that one works well with a high power creature deck. Or maybe you've got an enchantment heavy deck. Think about utilizing Destiny Spinner. It not only protects your creature spells from being countered, but also your enchantment spells too. And then there's Vexing Shusher, which protects basically all your spells by paying rule target spell can't be countered. But aside from counter spells, a lot of control strategies out there just like to sit back and draw a ton of cards, so let's talk about some ways to even the playing field. First up, there's Psychic Possession, which is an aura that says Enchant Opponent, skip your draw step. Whenever Enchanted Opponent draws a card, you may draw a card. So now if that player is going to draw a ton of cards, congratulations, you get to draw just as many cards for doing absolutely nothing. Or how about Spirit of the Labyrinth, which says each player can't draw more than one card each turn. Again, if those decks are counting on keeping their hands full, well, if they can't draw more than one card each turn, they're going to be in trouble. Or you can even the playing field by getting everyone to the exact same point with something like Windfall. It says each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. So that player might have worked hard to get their hand up to, say, seven cards, but now everyone else gets to go up to seven. And of course, because a lot of control strategies depend on having a hand, well, getting rid of their hand can really help you out too. So let's talk about Rakdos' Return, which is going to deal X damage to target opponent. That player discards X cards. So you can hit them for a decent amount of damage and get rid of their hand. And then Cabal Conditioning's Oracle text reads, Any number of target players each discard a number of cards equal to the highest mana value among permanents you control. So if you've got a decently high-costed commander or other permanents, goodbye to your opponent's hands. And when a control player is left handless, well, it's going to be really hard for them to control the board. Or maybe you want an approach that affects all players and gives them something back. How about Awaken the Erstwhile? It says each player discards all the cards in their hand, then creates that many 2-2 black zombie creature tokens. So maybe you've got a token strategy or running a lot of anthems, or again, maybe you just want to deal with control players. This can be a card to consider. And an especially brutal card to consider that might not win you any other fans at the table is Sire of Insanity. It says at the beginning of each end step, each player discards their hand. 
So again, a control player is going to have a really hard time unless they can deal with this. And again, with these discard spells, when you discard cards yourselves, maybe you've got a strategy that can benefit from them, like a graveyard strategy or reanimation strategy or a madness strategy. Regardless, something else that you definitely need to consider when combating a control strategy is protecting your things. So some equipment that can really help you out are things like Swiftfoot Boots, Mask of Avacyn, and Giant's Amulet, which give a creature you control hexproof. If you really need to keep a creature in play against a control strategy, these can come in huge. And if you don't mind not being able to target that creature yourself, consider Nurox Stealth Suit, which gives the equipped creature Shroud. This one can be especially effective because you can pay blue blue to attach it at instant speed. And finally, one way to really throw a wrench into a control strategy's plans might be with cards like Angler Turtle, Biden of Nasa, and Curse of the Nightly Hunt. Again, control strategies generally like to sit back and just do their own thing, but they might have some creatures in play, including their commander, that they really want to keep in play. And with something like Angler Turtle, they might not be able to. It has Hexproof so it protects itself, and it says creatures your opponent's control attack each combat if able. That control player was probably never planning on attacking with their commander, and now they have to, and now their commander is going to be very, very, very dead. And then Bind of Thassa can help out in multiple ways. It says whenever a creature you control deals common damage to a player, you may draw a card, and by paying one in blue, you tap it, and creatures your opponent's control attack this turn if able. So with this one, you can affect a specific opponent by using this on their turn, and also, obviously, this can draw you a lot of cards in the right deck. And again, if you want a more targeted approach to force one player to attack, Curse of the Nightly Hunt can definitely do that. It's an aura curse that says enchant player, creatures enchanted player controls attack each combat if able. Again, a lot of control decks that revolve around their commander are not expecting to have to attack with their commander, so this can definitely throw a huge wrench in their plans. Regardless, there are a lot of ways to deal with control strategies and to deal with specific commanders out there too. The biggest thing is I recommend finding ways that work well within your own deck to deal with those types of strategies. And if you're really struggling against a specific commander, just try to break it down. What does that commander want to do, and how exactly does it function, and what things can you do to throw a wrench into that player's plans? And again, perhaps the best way to deal with a problematic commander like Turgrid is to politic. Work with your other opponents that all know that Turgrid is a huge problem on the table, and work together to get rid of Turgrid and that player. And then perhaps continue about your game against each other. And with that, this show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thank you again, and have a good one.